Hey folks. Hey, hey, what's going on? Um Happy Friday guys. Um today we're gonna we're not gonna spend that much time. I'm really gonna get into your questions, but I I I, I wanna bring up this topic because someone asked me about this today, about quitting their jobs. And this is a sensitive topic, so just I really wanna treat this and I want to um, talk about this briefly because I really want you to get it and I want you to understand. Hey, my name is Wesley Virgin and this is Ask a Millionaire, episode number eight. And um, I'm Wesley Virgin. I'm a master motivational specialist and I'm also a master trainer all over the world. And I'm also a multimillionaire and I give people like yourself access to me to be able to... Um, figure out, have access to a millionaire one, but to be able to find out the small little details that the highly successful people never tell people like yourself who are trying to be successful, trying to be healthy, trying to be wealthy, and most of all, trying to develop and create a happy life. And um, I started these a couple of weeks ago and getting some great feedback. I really appreciate that, the likes, the shares, and the comments, and also the emails. And we're going to keep doing this until we create people that are actually taking life by the reins and really creating their their life the way that they want it. But it's all about becoming a millionaire, right? But so the question is this, Wesley, when should I quit my job? You know, when should I quit my boring ass, terrible, mind numbing, and I hate it, it's stressful, it's driving me crazy. When can I quit this job or, you know... How does it work? Because, and can I still work my job and still create a business, right? You right now, I'm talking to you that's watching this. Hey, thanks for the love. Wow, that's that's amazing. Hey, check this out. You probably work, right? Let me ask you a question. Let's do a poll. I want to be interactive in this. If you guys are coming below, I really appreciate that. If you have a job right now, I want you to be honest with yourself. Go ahead and say, I do, Wes. I have a job. I want you to be very honest because what I want to do in this this short um, meeting between us, I want to show you what you need to do to be able to, one, leave your job and chase your dreams, and two, feel good about that decision and be able to guarantee the success. That makes sense? Because it's a couple of things you have to do when you really want to become wealthy on a high level. Now, if you're not one of those people that want to create wealth on a high level, this is not for you, okay? So I want to know how many people on this call right now. All right, Kaylee, much love. I appreciate that. Welcome to the call. Okay, the grace, the grass, potential. I love it. Okay, cool. All right, let me know if you have a job right now. Let me know if you have a job, but you're chasing your dreams, okay? One, you have a job. Two, you're chasing your dreams in the process, okay? Um, Let me share a story with you. I watch a lot of Shark Tank. And I follow the guy by the name of Mark Cuban. And Mark Cuban, um, you know, he's a, a billionaire and basically he created a software company, made a lot of money. And he talks about two types of people, okay? He talks about entrepreneurs and he talks about one entrepreneurs, okay? And I want to explain both of these people. One entrepreneur is this it's a person that has passion and belief about something, okay? But while they're doing that, they're still working a nine to five job, okay? Now the question is this, why don't they just leave their job and chase their dreams? And I want you to think about that for a second, okay? And you might say, duh, Wesley, I know the answer because I still gotta pay bills. I still have to take care of my kids. Uh, I gotta put gas in the car, put food on the table. And You remember a while back when I talked about the 97 percenters and the disparity or the difference between the 3 percenters and the 97 percenters and why the gap is so, it's huge, right? It's huge from people that make millions of dollars and the people that are in poverty or struggling is trying to get there. Because these people take amazing risk, okay? Now, it's a risk for you if you leave your job and you quit it just to chase your dreams, okay? Because one thing is this. If you fail, the only thing that's on your mind is, what if I fail? 
If anybody's going through this, let me know. Comment below. Say, yeah, Wesley, you know, I don't want to fail. You know, what if I fail? What if I lose everything chasing my dreams? I don't, I'm not even sure if this is going to work. Let me know if you feel that. Seriously. Right now, you have a job, but you have a business on the side, or you have this idea that you're working on, but you're trying to do both, right? Your, your energy is in both places. You're focusing on trying to create the business, and you have another set of eyes or focus it's on the job, the everyday, the stuff that you f freaking hate, right? You know, a lot of us hate our jobs. And <clears throat> let me tell you my story, what I had to do, okay? Two years ago, I was an engineer making pretty good money. And I was working my business at the same time, right? I said, you know, I'm going to work my side business because another myth is this. You know, they say, oh, you know, just work your side business. You know, keep working your side business until your side business make enough money for your, um, that, that pretty much make more money for your job, right? What's up, Sean? What's up? Lori, what's going on? I just like to scream you guys' names out there. But, um, so side business, that's the biggest myth when you're really trying to create wealth. So I was working as an engineer, working on my website, working on 7dayfitness.com. Nothing was working. I made a little money. Now, that's one thing because, you know, some people say, well, well, where should I make it a couple of thousand dollars a month? But the problem was I was making an extra thousand, I think, or maybe two thousand dollars a month for my online business at one time. It was like up and down. But the problem was I was working 14 hours a day. Like I was working maybe eight to 10 hours at my job. I was a computer engineer, so I was getting calls all the time. I had to fix people's computers. Then I would get off, I had to work the business. And if I didn't work the business, I didn't get the money. And I was on an extra one to $2,000. And the problem was this. I was still stressed. I was still tired. I wasn't taking the vacation because I didn't have time. Because I was working the job and working the business. Okay? And so that went on for five years. And I had to make a decision. Now, I want you to listen to me very closely. I am not telling you to quit your job, but I'm answering the question based off my philosophy, based off my experience, what I believe an entrepreneur, someone that is serious about their goals and serious about their dreams, what they should be doing, okay? I was in my office one night, and I was looking at my computer. I was looking at my website, the website I was trying to promote, you know, trying to get out there, trying to get traffic, you know, trying to figure out how does this internet thing work? And I remember getting a call from my boss said, hey, why you haven't finished your work? And I need these reports by 9 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. It was like 8 o'clock at night. And I'm like, why is this guy calling me? I'm not even getting paid for this. <clears throat> I mean, I remember looking at all the emails that people wanted me to do stuff from my job, right? Contracts I had. It was all this stuff. And I was like, God. And I was getting to the point, I was like, man, why do I have to? do this and I said something in my something in my brain said you don't you don't have to do this stuff because I think you asked the same question too why am I doing it why do I have to keep answering these people calls why do I have to take a vacation when they want me to take it why do I have to take a restroom break when they want me to take a restroom break why do I have to send these weekly reports why do I have to answer these emails why do I have to answer to a person that's that's incompetent that I have more skill, more knowledge than them. And something in me said, you don't. And let me tell you something. This was the biggest hurdle in my life that I had to cross because I was scared like you. I was like, well, how am I going to pay my bills? You know, how I got a car note. I have an apartment. I have two children. I, I got to pay child support. Um... I gotta eat sometime, right? Gotta put gas in my car. And something in me, this is a true story, it said, you're gonna be okay. And what I did is, I asked from you, I said, you know what? I asked, the universe asked God, I said, you know what? I need to be okay financially while I'm going down this journey of trying to figure out this business. I just asked the universe, you know, you could say God, universe, but whatever you believe. But I asked the higher power, I said, I need to be okay. Because I remember it said, ask 
believe that you were to receive. And I believed it with all my heart. And I got to the point that even if I lost everything, this is what I want you to get. This is how you know if you're really ready to be an entrepreneur and to be really to approach your business in a different way. Because right now, how you're approaching your business is very lethargic. Because you have a job that you're comfortable with, which keeps you the drive and the grit that you need to prosper your business. See, it's different when you're working your business because you want some, some more shoes or maybe you want some extra money, some spending money. But it's different when you're working a business because you got to eat. It's different if you're working a business because you're trying to put clothes and shoes on your, on your kids' feet. On the bodies, it gets it's, it's it's different. Yeah, you know, you, I mean, it's it's sleepless nights. It's like you can't even afford to sleep. You have to work because you have to generate some income, because you don't no longer have that comfort. And I think this is the crossover. I believe anybody that does this, I know a couple of people that have, and I know some people who they said, "Man, I'm almost there," but I just, I'm almost there, but I just can't. And it's only because you fear that things are not going to work out. You fear that the business is not going to make it. But you tell me you have faith. You tell me that you believe. God, I hear this all the time. So, no, I believe in my business. But if you believe in it, leave your job. See how much you really believe in it. See, the thing is, I understood that I really didn't believe in myself and I didn't believe in my business at that time because I had a job. If I really believed in what I was doing, I would have left my job years ago and said, I'm going to make it no matter what. Now I have to create an income because if I'm not, I may not eat. If I'm not, I'm going to have to eat some ham and cheese sandwiches, right? I'm going to have to eat some noodles, right? I'm not going to be able to go out because I don't have any money for gas. But until I made the decision, I promise you no lie, within 365 days, everything became clear to me. Everything was serious to me. I mean, people, man, I ex people out of my life quickly. It was no more, well, I'm comfortable with them. They're my friend. No, they had to get out because, see, the thing is, I had to pay rent next month. So I had to make money. I had to make a sale. So not only did I work even harder, I got clear because I no longer was thinking about the job, the day-to-day. -day. That shit is boring. I... I mean, I just remember going to the job, fighting traffic, blowing the horn, waiting for an hour to get to the job, clocking in, having those dumbass meetings, talking about nothing. I remember the conference calls. I hated it. I hated it. What I'm telling you, to ask you the question, do you have to quit your job and become highly successful? Yes. You do? And I know other people say, oh, no, you don't. You don't have to do it. That's okay. But this is my experience. I'm a millionaire. I'm sorry, guys. I'm back. Um, this is my experience. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you I was trying to do both. Now, if all you're looking to make is a couple extra thousand dollars a month, man, go ahead. Keep your job. But if you, I mean, if you're trying to create wealth and you're trying to do it on a level that you can do whatever you want when you want, do you know how it feels to get up in the morning and to be able to do what the whatever I want? Do you know how that feels? How not to have to answer a phone call, not to, have to listen to a boss, I don't have to answer an email, I don't have to go to anybody's building, I don't have to drive an hour to work, I don't have to get some rest in the morning because I got to go to work, I can stay out all night, every night if I wanted to. Do you know how that feels? What I'm telling you, if you want that feeling, it's one step that you have to take, which I believe is a very difficult one. That is leaving your job, leaving 
the wantrepreneur stages. See, right now, you are what's called a wantrepreneur. That's just the wantrepreneur stages. You want it bad, but you're not an entrepreneur yet. See, an entrepreneur doesn't have a nine-to-five job. An entrepreneur is making his money based off what he's doing. He's signing his own paychecks. He's selling a person who is giving him money. He's not relying on the government. He's not relying on his nine-to-five job. He's not relying on some two-week vacation checks. He's not uh, relying on stimulus checks. He's not relying on tax income. He's a person who is self-reliant. This is the entrepreneur. So to answer your question, absolutely, you got to leave your job. <clears throat> I'm not telling you to leave it today. You have to make that decision. Just like I had to make that decision. Was it scary? Hell yeah. That's why everybody's not millionaires. That's not why everybody is living their dreams. Everybody's not traveling the world, buying amazing jewelry, buying cars, helping the poor, giving money away. That's why everybody's not doing this. But everybody wants it. But everybody's not prepared to do what it takes to get there. Everybody wants to say, oh, I want it bad. With their mouth. Oh, yes, I'm destined for this. But they're not prepared to put on the big boy pants, I call them. Put on their big boy pants, okay? That makes sense? And go out there and make and take risk. Take challenges. Things that make you scary, uncomfortable. Sometimes your stomach is going to hurt because you're coming to the end of the month. You have no money to pay your bills. And you have to figure it out. I'm going to share one thing with you um, before we start answering questions. Hey, guys, I appreciate all the questions. I'm going to get to them as well. Um, the only reason why you have to quit your job, I believe, and I'm going to tell you this because I know you want to ask me why. Why do we really have to quit our jobs? It's because the longer that you're in that job, you get conditioned, okay? You're being conditioned right now. I mean, it happens insidiously. And what that means is it's a very slow process. So you get used to getting a check every single week. You get used to getting two-week vacations. You get used to taking shit and bullshit from people telling you what to do. You get used to answering emails at a certain time. You get used to getting up at a certain time. You're used to getting in your car at a certain time. You get used to going to bed at a certain time. All this is an environment of experiences that are being created in your mind subconsciously. And what that does, it starts to kill your drive. It, it starts to kill your grit or your tenacity or that push that you need when you start to become an entrepreneur. This is why you got to get out of it fast. Because the longer you're in it, the harder it is for you to get out. Does that make sense? If I took a rubber band and I stretched that rubber band, and the longer that I keep that stretch, like this, I just keep that stretch, that rubber band starts to lose elasticity. And the longer that I hold it, the harder that rubber band is ever going to become back to its original form. You're the same way. You're the rubber band. Right now, you're stretched. You're stretched. And you're afraid to let go. You're stretched right now. You're afraid to let go. Let that rubber band go. And go back and take on a new form to reach higher for what's destined for you. Because see, I'm telling you right now, your goal, the universe, God has it for you. But he's saying, just let go. Son, daughter, just let go. I got you back. He had my back. The universe had my back. He's going to have your back. I promise you. Is it going to be rough? Yes. Is it going to be challenging? Hell yes. But you're going to make it. I promise you because I made it. I was scared as hell. man. I would cry sometime. But I made it, guys. But I made it so I can share the story with you. I'm telling you tonight. You got to let it go. Let the rubber band go. Come back to your original form. You letting a person stretch you so much, stress you out so much, hurt you so bad. Metabolic diseases, cancer, heart disease. All this is lifestyle. Let go. 
and let the universe and let God take over. Just ask. You say, you know what, God, I just need to be all right. Take care of me while I go down this journey to become absolutely successful, wealthy, serve your purpose, do what you want me to do, do what I'm destined to be here. I'm not here to work a job. I'm not here to be treated like a child. I'm not here to be treated like shit. I'm not here to be talked about. I'm not here to be used. I'm not here for that. I'm here to serve. I'm here to be prosperous. I'm here to be a king. I'm here to be a queen. I'm here to be the best. That's why you're here. I'm here to be abundant, to be abundant with riches and glory. That's why we're here. But you got to let go. So I want to give you that. I want to scroll through here and ask some questions here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got a lot of questions here. Man, I love my boy Matt. Matt, hold up, Matt. Matt, watch my... Guys, okay, let me tell you about Matt Hewlett. Man, wow, Matt Hewlett. This is crazy. Okay, so Matt is he used to be the CEO of the clickbait, the platform that I'm number one right now, that I'm making all the money, right? And, man, I love this guy, man. I remember in Vegas, Matt. You remember in Vegas, Matt? And I was like, Matt, I really want this thing bad, man. He was like, man, Wes, you know, I've seen a lot of people work for this, and, man, you are, you deserve it. He told me this. And I remember he said, man, I'm going to help you. I'm going to find out. I used to email him, Matt, you got anything? He said, not yet, Matt. Not yet, Wes. Keep going, though. Not yet, Wes. Man, man, let me tell you something, man. Much love to you. Your words, man, your encouragement really helped me out. Just provoked me to become, you know, su successful I am right now, man. Just much love to you, man. That guy is an amazing, smart, educated guy, but he really encouraged me. All right, let me go ahead and ask some questions. Hold on. Hey, Wesley. Um, Lori, what's up, baby? Um, need to get the ideal to pursue. Is IT the fastest way to wealth? I am a great writer. I am ready to try and go for this dream. But going through, uh, but going through exactly what you're talking about now, exactly. No, if you're a great writer, I want you to think about this. Think about something in the universe or in the world that is a problem. And you, as a writer, I want you to create something that solves that problem, because that's the beginning of your product. All right, and I will help you. Okay, I help you through this process. I'll do that for you. But it's all about if you're a writer, that's great. But you need to find a problem that exists, and you need to find a solution. That's why I want you to start, okay? Al Silas, what's up, my man? Hey, Wes, I thank you. I can't thank you enough for this. I'm so grateful. I find myself waiting for your broadcast. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for all the likes, guys, and the loves and the shares. I appreciate that. Um, let me see. Al Silas, I'm facing a challenge when I'm trying to work on my dream. I feel like my job gets in the way. At the same time, I have a fiancé, things committed. How do I do it? Let me share something with you, okay? I was talking to a gentleman earlier. Now, this is going to be a hard conversation for you, but you got to be honest with yourself, and I hope your fiancé is not watching this video. One, is your fiancé supportive? When I say supportive, um, you might have a big dream, and sometimes women, they do two things. They either support your dream, or they nag and they bitch about what you're trying to do. Now, it's not no fault of her, but the thing is, when a woman... Honestly, a woman is very emotional. They get impatient. They get antsy, right? And sometimes they get to the point they they want to see this dream happen. That's why not many women can be with men who are chasing their chasing their dreams, their ambitions, when they're making like no money, right? They're making a little bit of money, and they want the woman wants to do all this stuff, and you're chasing this dream, and it's hard for her to believe, and she's only believing through you. So one is you have to make sure that your woman, your fiance, supports you no matter what. That she encourages no matter what. I believe if I had a woman in my life right now, the right one, I'd be a billionaire today. But it's okay, all right? But I'm telling you, a woman can do two things. She can take you to a point that you can't even believe, or she will absorb, she will suck your energy, and have you have a level so low, you will be crying, my friend. I've been there, okay? So, one, is she supportive? Is she encouraging? Does she encourage your dream? Does she believe in you? Even though she don't see anything, it takes a special type of woman to be in this type of man's life. Because to create this dream and to see it every day, and where the world is continuing to tell him that it's not going to work, that you're stupid, that you're dumb, you quit your job, that don't make any sense, right? You have to have someone that's around you, which is your wife or your fiance, that's saying, baby, go for it. Keep going. You're going to do it. Man, you have no idea 
how that makes a man feel. So these are the questions you need to ask yourself about your woman, okay? <laughs> All right. Al Salas. Oh, wow. Uh, with the right mindset, how fast can I see results doing the right things? So another thing is, and I'm going to talk about this in another video, time. What I want you to do, Al, don't worry about time. See, the biggest thing that the world fails, especially in America, because one thing, we want results fast. We want results fast, okay? That's one. And um, we get very impatient, okay? Understand, even though we live in a microwavable world, it's not like that, okay? That's the wrong type of condition or the wrong type of reality to have. You have to get to the point that time stands still. That it doesn't matter how fast you're getting anything. Because all you really want is what? A feeling of something. See, once your business making, once you start making the money, guess what? You're going to feel a certain way for a short period of time. And that feeling will subside. It will go away. Okay? And that feeling needs to come back again. You'll do more great things. But you have to understand that right now, today, you can have that feeling. You got to get out of this fast stuff. You got to get out of this time stuff. This is one of the biggest challenges that I had to deal with before I made it big. When I got calm, when I no longer worried about when the tangible things were going to come, they came. Okay? Hey, Wes. What's up, Ryan? My favorite business, Q&A Pro. Two questions. I got you, baby. Is it worth to build a list with free lead magnets? No, don't do that. When studying converting copy, what do you see newbies don't see? This is what I want you to do. I want you to search Dan Kennedy. Listen to me, Ryan. Listen to me right now. Search Dan Kennedy right now on uh, YouTube, and I want you to watch every video on Dan Kennedy. Okay? Just watch every video. Dan Kennedy, one of the best copywriters in the world. Watch every video, weather tracking videos that come. I want you to inundate your mind. I want you to watch him, each of those videos at least 10 times. Every video on Dan Kennedy. He's the greatest copywriter, and the guy's a, oh, God, he's a fucking amazing thinker. Listen to him for, like, 10 to 20 times, you'll be the greatest copywriter ever, bro. Trust me. How, okay, uh, Al Salas, how do, you, how do you handle people in your life that you love but perhaps aren't as hopeful and see the future as you do. You love them and you just can't shun them. Oh, those people? You got to let them go. Short answer, man. I'm not going to pacify the answer. You got to get them out. Les Brown said this. Two people doing, there are people in your life that are doing two things. They're adding value to your life or they're taking from you. Period. And you know it. And the only reason why you're there because you have this emotional attachment, okay? But you have to stand up, be a man, and say, hey, despite this emotional attachment, these, this person does not align with my goal. This person doesn't align with my thing. I love them. I love my mama. I love my daddy. I love my aunt, my aunt, and my brother. But there was a time they were not aligned with my goals. My mom used to encourage me. My, my dad used to encourage me. But they wasn't aligned with my goals. Does that make sense? The type of thinking. That's why I had to get away for a short period of time. And now I can spend as much time with them as I want. But I had to leave them. All of them. My brother. All of them. Cousins. All of them. Does that make sense? On, not because they're not. I didn't love them. It's they, their goals are not aligned with mine. You have to get around people who have like goals. That are thinking like you. That are thinking better than you. Does that make sense? You got to let them go. You have to leave that emotional stuff. And you have to be educated and intelligent enough to understand the process. And understand that those people may not understand. But once you get the money, they understand quickly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Al Salas, hold on. Uh, Al got a lot of questions. I love it, man. I love it. Lastly, what do you think is the best way to start a following after you start a blog and post YouTube video? Just what you do. Okay, have faith. Just keep posting until someone views it. That's what I did. This is if you have no money. If you have money, you can do all type of advertising stuff. But that's what I did. I posted videos until 
people start watching them. That's it. I posted 150 videos before I got my real first view. 150 videos. Okay? So you keep posting videos because as you recreate videos, you're going to get better and better and better. Right? Your message will get to the people easier and you'll start making the money. And you'll start getting the views. So it's all about repetition. Is what? The mother of skill. Say it with me. Repetition is the mother of skill. Anything you want to become good at, you have to do it over and over again till one day you get the tipping point and bam, you get the checks. Thank you, Vance. I'm looking forward to revisiting this video later. Here's the like, share. Man, I appreciate the sharing. Guys, thanks for the sharing like, guys. <sighs> you make an old man feel good. I'm lying. I'm a young man. Young. Young, baby. All right, salute, bro. What's good, Wes? What's up, Jay? Jeff. Jeff. Lorena Lori. Thank you. I can start with a problem. Experience a lot of them. I can't find a solution. Awesome. Start, um, start advice. Great, great, guys. Man, thanks for that share. Thanks for that like. I see them. They float in across the screen on this live thing. I love it. Guys, it's Friday, man. Guys, don't go out. Everybody that's on this call, man, don't go out. Go work. You know, I'm finna go to a little seminar. I'm finna go get my study on, learn as well. Guys, because, you know, I wanna be a, I'm going to be a billionaire. You know, I'm going to help a lot of people. So, guys, I want us to work. Speak West. Naomi, see from Montreal. What's up, baby? I'm going to Montreal, uh, Montreal very soon. Oh, Ryan, Dan Kenny, Inception coming up. There you go. I love it. Jennifer Dukes. What's up, Miss Dukes? Makes sense. It does, doesn't it? I know. I know, I know. Wes, I make more than 100K. All right, you make 100,000 a year or per month? To clarify. I'm working at two big projects that will be ready in about six months or more. If I still have my job, maybe three or months less, I'll quit my job. But if I quit, I don't even know. Uh, hold up. I don't even know if it, if it would sell well. What do you think? Should I go full out? Or should I play it safe for now? Hey, DeGrasse, you must just got here. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. DeGrasse or Potential, go full out, brother. Man, if you're making 100K, I was at the same place. I was an engineer. I was making like $200,000, $300,000 a year. Right, but I was working my ass off. So I worked myself into an early grade. I quit it all. And I wasn't even, my business wasn't doing nothing. So when I'm telling you right now, DeGrasse, Wesley Virgil, Wesley Million Dollar Virgin is telling you to go all out, be fearless, be strong. I'm telling you, when you speak with passion and conviction, see, I learned, I got this from my dad. If you ever met my dad, you know, he's not like a rich man or nothing like that, but he's rich because I'm rich now, but. Check this out. One thing about my dad, he had conviction, man. When he said something, you believed it. And what you got to tell yourself, digress, look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to fill out. And I will not fail. This is done. I already see the end goal right now. Potential. Mr. Potential, you got to see the end goal right now on this call. You already got to see the vision of it already working. You're doing whatever you want. All your desires are met right now. You're going to do it no matter what, period. Does that make sense? You got to claim it right now. Once you claim it, done. Quit the job. Let it go. You're going to be okay. Trust me. Tell yourself that. Say, you know what? The grace, you're going to be okay. Good. Let's go to work. Let's go, baby. You have no idea what type of man you will become when you can do this. You become fearless. Every situation in life, man, it's not going to even phase you. Anybody that can quit their job? quit their job and don't have no income coming in, right? And they're going out to chase their dreams. Man, much love to that person. Man, that's an incredible person because to make that type of decision, that means you're transforming, my friend. You don't see it, but you're transforming. You're doing what 98% of people would never do. They would never quit their job without having a plan B. They would never quit their job without having something else on the side. Never. Only the one percentage will, right? The people that are out there that's on top, looking good, looking amazing. But before, they was low, but who cares? But look at us now. We making paper. We making money. You, you, DeGrace, this is your time. Quit it. Let it go. Go full out. You will win. Love, Leviticus. Leviticus. Oh, that's a scripture in the Bible. Oh, Leviticus, Noah Testament. What's up, Mr. Rowley Jr.? Hey, Wes, appreciate the advice. I just got a question. What steps did you take when you wanted to create your first product? Tangible, intangible. 
So the first thing you have to do is this. Listen close. If there's a problem in the world, like my problem, the problem with people was they, uh, people can't lose weight. People want to look sexy and hot. And men want hot girls and women want, um, you know, they want men to look at them and say, oh, you're sexy, you're cute, you're gorgeous. Great. So I understood that this problem was going to exist forever because they keep feeding us all this stupid ass food that's keep making us fat. So I said, man, problem, solution, create the product. Help people lose weight fast. That's it. That was the idea. That was it. I was say that was the problem. The problem was people want to lose weight. They don't have anything out there that's out there for them to lose weight. I mean, everything out there to me is bullshit. Give them something real good and solve a problem. Leviticus is all about solving a problem. That's it. That's all what marketing is. That's all what business is. It just solves a problem. The hairstylist, you know what he, you know what they get paid for? Because they can make you beautiful. They can, see, I got a haircut today. You like it? It's nice. You like that? See, I got a haircut today because it makes me look better. It solves a problem. If I don't have my hair, it doesn't look good, right? Teacher, they get paid because they solve a problem. Kids need to be educated, right? That's the problem. The problem is kids not being educated. So the teacher solves the problem. Does it make sense? All right? We're just solving a problem, guys. That's all we do. You're a problem solver. You're an entrepreneur. You're a problem solver. The thing is, at your job, you do something, you solve a problem. You're an accountant. You might be a clerk. You might be a nurse. You're solving a problem. The problem exists. You fix it. But the thing is, you need to fix it on your terms to become an entrepreneur and let the 9 to 5 go. Let that 12-hour, 20-hour shifts go. Stop letting people stress you out. Stop letting people have you working your ass to death. You, you, ain't no, you ain't no freaking child. You're a grown-ass woman or man. Take control of your life and decide that today that you're going to control your life how you want it. And guess what? You're going to be okay. Okay? You're going to be okay. Hey, guys, I got to get out of here. I'm sorry. Um, got a couple of things I need to do. People keep calling me. And uh, I need to answer all these calls. But guess what? I don't have an answer to these calls because you are more important. But uh, if you have any more questions, leave them now. Guys, thanks for the shares. Thanks for the like. Please share this video. Please share this video. I'm asking from my heart. Share it. Share it with somebody else. Okay? Like this video. Um, let's get this around. This is a message that people around the world need to know. They, not that many people get access to a millionaire. Not that many people get access to people in their circle that are doing very well. I want to be that person for you, okay? Let me be the advocate to many other, not just you, to other people, okay? Let's create something huge here. I see something big being created. I see myself in huge type of parties, not even seminars, parties, because we're celebrating our success. Instead of trying to create it, we're celebrating our success. That makes sense? And that's what I want us to do. So please like and share this video out to your friends, family, people that you know out there that are trying to do the same things that you do. But they need a role model. They need someone that they can look, okay? They need someone that they can look at and say, you know what, it's possible. But look at Wesley, it's possible. Look at this brother, this handsome brother here in Houston, Texas, 36 years old. He's making millions of dollars. He pretty much can do what he wants. We watched this guy for years. You can go through my Facebook. You can watch my journey here. And now he's spending, um, you know, an hour out of his day every day to give us some knowledge about what does it take to become a millionaire? What does it take to be self-reliant? What does it take to be happy? What does it really take to be able to take the life by the reins and control our destiny? Not letting the wind and the storms of life direct our past. Not being a fatalist. Not letting other people tell us how we should be living our life. Tell us how we should be feeling. No. Making our own decision and say, you know what? I want to feel this way because I choose to. I want to do this thing because I choose to. I want to get up in the morning because I choose to. I want to fly to Paris because I choose to. Right? Does that make sense? To be able to make choices in life. Be able to have options in life. Be able to be liberated and free. Which I am. I believe you are as well. Thanks for the share. Oh, man. I really appreciate it. Leviticus, you're amazing, man. I appreciate that. Jen, do all business ideals need a business plan? No. <clears throat> I'm glad you asked that question. Don't. I don't have a business plan, guys. You know what I have? I have a journal of dreams. I have a journal of visions. I have a journal of things that I wanted to do that I wanted to do passionately. I don't have a business plan, that's bullshit. 
That's another thing, going to business school to learn how to, you don't go to business school to learn how to do business. You don't go to get an MBA and tell me, oh, I got a master in business administration. That doesn't teach you how to do business. You have to get out there in the trenches, man. You got to get out there in the, in the weeds. You got to go work, period. That's how you learn how to do business. So no, Jane, you don't need a business plan. What you need to do is take action today. Take a step in the direction of your dream. Take a step in the direction of your goal. Create your plan. Does that make sense? You don't need to write down a plan. If anything, you write down what you want to create from everything that's going on in your head, your desires, your wants, the thing that you feel that you want bad within you. Write that down and write it in the present tense. Say, I am this. I am a millionaire. I am successful. I'm a great father. I'm a great mother. I'm an amazing person. I develop great relationships. I am meeting amazing people around the world that are very lucrative and contributing to me. I'm contributing to them. Write this stuff down, okay? <clears throat> I appreciate that, Jen. Another question. What's the name of the 22-year-old guy you mentioned in your last video? Oh, yeah. Um, his name is Andrew. Andrew is my guy. Um, 21 years old, man. I'm not going to say his last name. I don't know if he want to put his business out there. But he's doing very well. He's doing big. He's doing... Um, almost as much as I'm doing per month. Uh, I'm doing very well. But that should let you know if a 21-year-old can make over $300,000 net per month, okay? If they can make this type of money, that means you can make this type of money. It's possible. That's all it means. And don't worry about how. Just know that it's possible, okay? I encourage anybody on the age of 25, my young, I was just mentoring a guy earlier today, and I was telling him what he needs to get in. I said, man, get in the Internet, buddy. You know, you're 17 years old. You have no idea if you spend the next five years not chasing girls. Right now, you don't have any bills. You stay with your dad. You're living a great life. Right now, you can focus all your energy for the next five years and create something huge, bigger than what your dad and your mom has created. And they'll be like, man, what are you doing, right? Take the time. Be serious. If I was talking to myself right now, if I was 18, 20 years old, I'd say, Wesley, get serious. Get serious. If you're 30... Stop fucking around. Seriously. If you're 30 years old, stop fucking around. Stop playing around. Get serious with this thing. You're either going to do it or you're not, all right? Get off, the, get off the fucking toilet or shit. Do something. Or just stop even trying to chase to be successful. If you're not going to get up and do nothing, just stay where you are. Okay? Get busy, guys. Stop playing around. Because when you get to a certain age, man, it's done. It's over. I just believe it's hard, man. It's hard because that condition has set in, guys. Um, I'm a millionaire. I love it. I love it, Gerald. Uh, Paul. Paul, what's up, baby? Hey, Wes, what book are you currently reading? Not your favorite book. Um, <clears throat> Actually, I was just... I'm going to be honest with you. No lie. I was reading this book called Change Paul Wesley Virgin. I'm by myself. Can't believe it. But this book is about health and stuff. But... Oh... Man, I'm reading so many books, but I did literally pick, pick this up today. But I'm going through Think and Grow Rich right now. I'm reading a couple of pages in that book right now. So, um, yeah, Think and Grow Rich, that's just my book. I like to every um, couple of times a week go over some of that stuff, like sexual trans transmutation, the power of thought, the power of the brain. That stuff is very interesting to me. So um, that's what I'm reading right now. Um, Jeff, how do you structure your upsells and what makes a good upsell in your eyes? Okay, so check this out. I'm going to give you the secret what I do. I was the first person that I think that did this in health and, um, health and fitness. Their first upsell should be a high ticket item, 67 97 bucks. If they say no to that, say, okay, okay, I understand that's a lot of money. So we're going to give it to you for half off. We're just going to take off this one thing. Does it make sense? It's the same thing they do to you when they sell you stuff in the stores, car dealerships. So you give them the big price first, and you give them the same thing, cut it in half on the down sale. Trick. That's my trick. I gave it to you for free. That made me a lot of money, guys, by doing that. A lot of people have already used that and copied me, but um, it works. Any more questions? Guys, <clears throat> Guys, man, I love you. I love you so much. I really do. Um, I mean, I, I know I will see you one day. I'm not going to say maybe. I hope I will be seeing you one day in person. I'm going to shake your hands. I'm going to hug your your arms, you know, kiss your faces. I want to see the people that I talked to from years ago, right? We're going to look at these videos from years ago because one day it's going to be episode 2000, right? And you're going to see how you have grown. You keep watching my stuff. You keep inviting people to this type of information. You're going to find out how you're going to be progressing because even my speech pattern, 
how I am communicating to you right now is influencing you. Okay? And I'd rather be influenced by a millionaire than someone that's trying to be a millionaire. I'll be rather influenced by someone that is doing it than someone that is trying to do it. Okay? Does that make sense? So, you know, these chats, these seminars, what do you want to call them? Are these one-on-ones between me and you and I, um, they're beneficial. And even though you don't see everything happening, it's happening. And it's happening here. Your thought pattern, is, you're thinking differently. Like today you learn that you need to quit your job. And you learn why. And you learn if you stay with your job, what tends to happen. You tend to get very comfortable. You lose the drive. You get lethargy. You get lazy. You get very comfortable because you know you have something on the side that's going to pay your life. But you have to jump out there, guys. Jump off the cliff. Steve Harvey said the best. He said, man, you got to jump off the cliff, guy. You go get some scrapes and bruises, and guess what? Your parachute, it's not going to open up immediately. No, it's not. But it will open. That's what you got to believe. You just got to jump. You're not sure. The thing is, with this parachute, you don't have a jaw string. It's just going to open up automatically when it's time. You're going to get hit, bruised, knocked on the head, slapped. You're going to hit those rocks, but it will open. You're going to see people flying by, but yours will open. But you got to jump. It's the hard part, right? Um, look, man, I'm modeling you. What time do you wake up every day and what do you, <clears throat> first three hours of the day? So I wake up, my body usually wake up about 9 or 10 o'clock, all right, getting ready to go to the gym. Uh, first thing I do, I meditate. I say I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to the universe. I'm grateful to my kids. I love my, my family. I'm grateful for my life, my things that I've purchased, my bed, my fingers, the air that I breathe, my existence, my followers, my YouTube subscribers, my Facebook friends. I do this every day. It's a um, habit for me. Then when my chef come in, she's like, hey, Wes, I'm here. I'm like, okay. Uh, don't come in here. I'm naked. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I go in there and I have my green drink and I drink water as well. I always drink water first thing in the morning to hydrate my body properly. And then um, I sit there for a while and I go to the gym. I say, what's I do every morning? doesn't matter if I'm here or I'm in Paris or I'm in France, Fiji, Greece. Um, same thing. I just don't have my maid there. I have my room service come up. My butler. Jen, I feel it. I've already decided to leave a job that hurts me physically and jump ahead. I love it, Jen. Much love to you. Hey, remember this. Come here. I got your back. Did you hear me? I got your back. Okay? You're not going to fail. I got your back. All right? I'm here. I'm going to give you mental support. I, I will continue to create this video because sometimes when it gets hard, you're going to need a video like this to motivate inspire you that makes sense i will be here for you i don't care if i always have 13 even though i know one day i'm gonna have 15,000 people watching this stuff listen to that 15,000 people okay but right now i'm gonna serve the 15 that i have and i believe in you and thank you thank you so much for the likes to the shares the loves they flying across the screen thank you jeff thank you jen thank you paul thank you leviticus thank you the grace thank you jennifer dukes ryan saplin Nassim, thank you, man. More likes, more shares. Appreciate it. Thank you, George, Jorge, Al Silas. Thanks for another like. Thanks for that share. Man, much love. Man, it's just overwhelming of love when I get those. I appreciate that. Because that means the message that I'm giving you is, is impactful, that it's working, that you're feeling this, that you're looking with me with focus, with attention. I have your attention. And I appreciate that because I really, from my heart, when they give you what I've learned and what I've failed and what I've did things wrong and where you need to be to take that fast track to be very successful. Hey, guys, I got to get out of here. Much love. I'll see you soon. Guys, share this video out. Like it.